Hi everybody, I'm going to show you today what we do with trees like this, big ugly bully trees that do not have much of a value on the commercial market, but I've found a way to utilize them, so watch and I'll show you what we do. Like I've said in other videos, this uh, woodlot is such that the owners want me to get this big pine out of here and in the process of dropping these big pines they make a big hole and they do can, can do a lot of damage but uh, most of the time it's well worth getting them out of there so the young trees can grow and produce a better crop. So this butt log is 21 feet long. That is up to the point where it pronged. There's still more wood in the top of the tree too, but the butt log is what I'm dealing with right now. It's going to be two 10-foot logs. So I'm marking here the first 10-footer. I'm tempted to hitch right on and take the whole 20-footer, but it's a pretty good sized piece. So when you're dealing with horses, sometimes it's just wise to take a smaller 
pitch and not overdo it. So I think this time I'm just going to take a 10 foot log and come back for the second 10 footer. If the road was a little bit better and frozen harder and more snow, I would take the full 20 footer. I'm sure they could handle it even today, but still, like I said, sometimes it's wise not to overdo it. So I'm just getting the horses turned around and the cart turned around and this is one reason why some people don't like carts and would prefer just having a loose evening with their horses because when they come in here with the team on a loose evening they can turn pretty well on a dime and get hitched on but with a cart sometimes you got to jockey it around a little bit to get the cart situated exactly where you want it to be and that's what I'm doing now and it sometimes it does take a little bit of maneuvering to get it where I want it to be. I do prefer the cart over a loose evening though any day of the week. So I'm throwing two chains around this log because I'll hitch up a cradle hitch because it's so large. Stop, lady. Up here. Here's a mistake I'm actually making right now. I should have cut this side of the log before I brought the team back and then cut on the other side to finish it off. But now I'm finishing it off with the horses hitched on and if they were to pull ahead, there'd be a chance of actually catching me. Um, it was fine, they were fine, but uh, still it was not a wise way to cut this log.
Okay, now we got these logs out, let's go to the sawmill and see what we're going to make them into. Okay, here we are at the sawmill. We're going to saw some of these, a couple of these big logs. Um, watch and see what happens. This is that log that came in on my trucker's load of logs that he brought here that I showed you on one of my last videos. It's the one that had the two big holes in it, so we're going to see what kind of a tabletop that they will make. All of these table tops or bar tops that I make are two and a half inches thick. Usually I have bark on both sides but a lot of people just want bark on one side so I would make some with bark on one side and some with bark on both sides. Once in a while I'll make a thicker one but most of them are two and a half inches thick.
Most of the live edge slabs that I make are good solid wood. This tree here is rotted pretty good, but uh, um, I make some of these sometimes too for the real artistic type of people that can do wonderful things with this. I've never finished off one of these tabletops, but somehow with these big holes and this rotten wood, they put something over the top of it, almost like glass, and it looks really nice when they get it done. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to end the video with some pictures of some of, some of the tabletops my customers have purchased from me and the way that they've finished them off. We have some very talented craftsmen in our area. They do great work.